Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi atahirin Wa salamu taslima Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Respected um, brothers and sisters Today we are going to have a lecture on the importance of the Holy Quran in the holy month of Ramadan and I, I, since I, 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 Akhlaq has followed me in my um, studies, I, I have tied it to the importance of, um, of the Quran and its implementation in our lives to help us develop spiritually and ethically and morally. So you'll see for our discussion that that is the main theme of trying to, to show its importance in this um, lecture. So as you know, the month of Ramadan holds a great value as compared to all other months of the year. Allah the Exalted has chosen this month instead of all the other months, above all the other months, for, for us to learn sympathy, empathy uh, for, for those downtrodden and poor individuals, that his fasting should be a fertile ground. Fasting should be a fertile ground for the moral qualities of compassion, mercy, and generosity. So Allah the Exalted has chosen this month, as over all the other months, as a fertile ground for us to develop morally and spiritually, for us to develop in a proper Islamic lifestyle. We should really get out of this fasting the, the moral qualities of compassion and mercy and, and generosity. Another benefit of fasting is to teach us and train us to control and have control over our desires, to have control over the nafsu amara. The nafsu amara is the commanding self mentioned in Surah Yusuf, um, ayat 53. Inna an nafsa al amara bil suai suai illa ma rahima rabbi inna rabbi ghafurun rahim. Zulaika said in this uh, that's being relayed to us in the Quran that the commanding self indeed com prompts to evil except in as much as my Lord has mercy indeed. The Lord is all forgiving and all merciful. So this is this nafsul amara is this this commanding self that we have. It's the low level of 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 nafs in us, and we have to control it because it goes. It once it desires this, desires this, desires that, and we have to um, put control and hold over it. So the level of the self of desire is based and if not reigned, if it is not reigned in, if not put under control, this nafsu amara, if it is not put under the control of reason, of aql, it will cause the ruin of the human being. It will cause the ruin of the Adamic soul. Reason says to obey Allah's commands. In fact, obedience to the laws is one part, a big part, of aql. If a person doesn't obey Allah, they're missing a part of their aql. So it also tells us, reason tells us to avoid the prohibited things, to stay away from the haram things. Reason also says to save ourselves from the fire. There's a fear that we may enter the fire if we commit certain things, if we reject certain things. There is a real fear both historically and presently. Reason says that we have to take precaution and do what we need to do to save ourselves from that fire. Reason also says that we should earn rewards. There's, a, there's an offer of rewards. We should, we should go and seek to earn it. Reason says that we should thank the one who gives us to be appreciative, to be self-controlled, for the sake of Allah. And pretty simply, reason should prevent human beings from corruption and sin. So this nafsu amara must be controlled by that reason, 
that reason, that akal, that intellect, will prevent us from corruption and sin. So another point that we can note about this holy month of Ramadan is that we can note about it, this holy month is that it is a great opportunity for us to be thankful, to have shukr of Allah, to be, to be thankful to Allah, to do shukr of Allah, and to do ibadat, worships, that will help us move towards human felicity. The human felicity is the achievement of the rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. So if we take this opportunity in this holy month, and we are thankful and appreciative to Allah for the, the things that He has bestowed upon us, then we, and we do our ibadat, and we do our worships, it will help us move towards that felicity, of, that felicity that Allah has put for us, which is His pleasure, His rida. So when we consider fasting in Islamic history, we can note that at first the Muslims would stop eating once they went to bed. So when fasting was first prescribed, the Muslims would eat from the time of Maghrib and until they went to bed. And they would not continue um, eating in the morning after they woke up. So they felt like they had to stop. They, this was, they had to stop at the time of going to bed. So after some incidences, it was uh, revealed that they could fast up until the Fajr time. This is something that we should also take note of too. Is something very thankful that we should be thankful for to Allah. That he has given us this time of eating and drinking at night after a long fasting. And be very appreciative that it is not more difficult. That it wasn't left that in that state where we went to bed and we didn't um, eat and drink after and we we had to just stop as soon as we got tired and went to bed. So this is something else we should we should pay attention to in even our um, night times. This again shows us to appreciate what we have and the blessings bestowed upon us in obedience to the commands of Allah the Exalted. So regardless, our topic today is not the holy month itself, as this can be this can take various forms and various different aspects. And we can consider it from various different ways. Rather, our topic here in this lecture is the importance of the Holy Quran in the holy month of Ramadan. In fact, the month of Ramadan has been honored with the revelation of the Quran. This holy month that we are in, that we fast every year, has been honored. Honored with the Kitab of Allah being revealed in it. Honored with the Quran being revealed in it. So in uh, in a dua, the dua of the welcoming of the month mentioned in Sahih Sajjadiyah by Imam Zain al Abidin, he states, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, min tilka shahrahu. He says, the praise of Allah, the praise of Allah. He says, the praise of Allah, that is the praise, all the praise is to Allah. He's, Imam Zain al Abidin says, all the praise is to Allah. The one who is worshipped, the one who bewilders the mind, this, this Allah means, means these things some say. The one who is worshipped and the one who bewilders the minds at his exaltedness. When we, when we try to, to um, realize his exaltedness, our, our, our minds are bewildered and astonished and, and in awe. And he is the one who is turned to, the one who is worshipped, the one who created all things in contingency, and his self is not created. The, the which made from those definite paths, those subul, his month. That is the month of Ramadan, that he has chosen from all the other months, and made it a road that we can get toward Him, that we can get closer to Him, that we can travel towards His marafa, His, his recognition, and His rida, His pleasure. Imam Zayd al-Abadeen continues, Shahru Ramadan, here it is, the month of Ramadan. 
we find our title of what it is. Then he continues, Shahra as Siyam, Shahra as Siyam, the month of Siyam. What is Siyam? Siyam is to abstain. Siyam, the Saum fasting, it is, it is to abstain. And technically, it means in the fifth, it means to abstain from the invalidators of fasting. That is to abstain from, as example, eating and drinking and some of the other um, uh, invalidators of fasting. However, we can also note that spiritually we must abstain from a number of immoral deeds. Although the fast is valid from a fifth perspective, the thawab is void. The reward is void if we do these um, immoral deeds. So the spirituality and thawab is vanishing when one does things like backfighting, speaking lies, looking at haram, listening to haram, etc. In, in this regard, there's a riwayat from Imam Sadiq which says, Fasting is not only from food and drink alone. When you fast, protect your tongue from lying, your eye glances from what Allah has forbidden. Do not fight with one another, do not be jealous of one another, do not backbite one another, do not abuse one another, and do not be unjust to one another. Refrain from false accusations, lying, fighting, suspicion, backbiting, and slandering. Be those who look forward to the hereafter and wait for your days. Awaiting for what Allah like the waiting for what Allah has promised for those who have prepared to meet Allah, the Laqa of Allah. You must have tranquility, sobriety, humility, servility, submissiveness of a slave who fears his master, and be fearful as well as hopeful. Imam Zain al Abidin continues more. He says, Wa shahra al Islam. The month of Islam, the month of Islam, many people out there don't recognize the real definition of the word Islam. If we took into consideration this real definition of Islam, our idea of what it means to be those who are considered the actors of Islam, the Muslims, the people who do the Islam, then we would have to Start to obey Allah. Because Islam is actually the submission to God's will and command. In fact, Islam means submission. This is why we can note that every previous Sharia and prophetic mission has been has been we can call Islam. That is, it has always been a call to the submission to the one unequal Allah. So even though they were in different um, uh, capacities or, or um, levels of, of development in, in, the, in the history of Sharia, they, are always, they always were Islam. So then Imam Zain al-Abidin continues, Wa shahra at the month of purity. We must be pure and must become pure, my respected brothers and sisters. There is external filth called khaba. There is this external filth called khaba. And there is internal impurity called hada. But there is also a there is also a filth of one's inner soul. What do I mean by a filth of one's inner soul? I mean that it is that one is corrupted with the vices and disobedience to Allah. That our souls are dirty, that they are rusty, that they are cluttered up with the filth of corruption and sin. This is an impurity in the soul. The other two, we can remove hadaf by ghusl, we can remove khabaf by washing, we can remove uh, hadaf by wudu, we can remove these things by certain acts of, of worship and certain acts. But the internal impurity, the, the, the filth of vice and disobedience to Allah, we need to remove with obedience to Allah, with habit, and with dua, with Allah's help. So those 
filthy deeds and sayings and actions and thoughts have stained the heart's cloth. We must scrub off the filth thoroughly throughout this month. Just as we must keep pure from the certain hadaf for our fast to even be valid, we should take a lesson from it and look at ourselves and scrub off the filth of our corrupt and darkened hearts. Imam Zain al Abidin continues, Wa shahra at-tamhiz, at-tamhiz. So to put to test, to test can make pure and to put Write ourselves. So we are noting these qualities of the month of Ramadan. We had that it's the month of purity, that it's the month of submission, and that it is the month to put to test. We must put ourselves right in this month. We must set ourselves in the correct place in this month. We can succeed in this test, and by passing through these tests in this holy month, we can purify our souls and set right ourselves. And in fact, it's very easy in this month. It's very easy. It's a very great opportunity to do so. Then we have Washahra al Qiyam, the month of standing. There are hundreds of Nawafil prayers in the month of Ramadan. There are a lot of opportunity to, to worship, to worship Allah and get thawab, get pure in this holy month. It is a very big blessing to us. It is said that when Prophet he went on Mahraj, went in the ascension into the, the heavens, he seen the angels um, building palaces, and they had bricks of gold and silver. And he seen that the angels had run out of building materials. So he, asked, he, he requested from them, why? Why do you run out of, of building materials? And they had said that they run out of building materials because they are the deeds the materials are the deeds of the believers so these angels were building our palaces the palaces of the believers but when we stop doing the right deeds and we do bad deeds their building material is not there so here is our point from this dua i know i've stretched it a bit long but it's interesting dua and it's just one one little section from this dua of the welcoming of the month of ramadan in sahifa sajjadiyah um imam zain al-abidin says alavi unzila fihi al-quran hudan linnas wa baynatin min al-huda wa furqan wal furqan so, forgive my, 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 my pronunciation, but that which he sent down in it, the Quran. A guidance to mankind and clear signs from the guidance and the Furqan. This word Furqan is actually one of the names of the Holy Quran. And it, mean, it comes from Faraka, which means to distinguish or to separate. That is the Quran is the criterion between truth and falsehood. Therefore, we can note the status of the holy month from these lines in Sahifa Sajjadiyya and the merit of the holy Quran being revealed in this holy month. For the guidance and criterion, the distinction between good and bad of the human beings. That is, we can realize that the, the ability to succeed is in submission, test, purification, of which its doors have been opened widely for us in this month. And one of the most fundamental necessities that we require, that we need in purification, in test, and in submission is the Holy Quran. So we have a sermon from the Prophet Sallallahu uh, for the welcoming of the month of Ramadan as well. And you'll see this point in this. He says, O people, whosoever among you improves his hulk, those inner moral qualities, during this month, he shall have the pass for going over the sirat on the day of judgment. The sirat is the bridge over the hell. When the feet shall slip, Whosoever lessens the burden from his slave 
Allah shall lessen his reckoning for him. Whoever prevents his evil, Allah shall prevent his anger from him on the day he shall meet him. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever severs the link with his relations in this month, Allah shall sever his mercy from him on the day he shall meet him. Whosoever fulfills a duty in this month, his rewards will be multiplied 70 times compared to the same deed done during other months. Whosoever increases the salawat on me during this month, Allah shall lighten his burden on the day when he shall be lightening the burdens. And whosoever recites a verse, an ayat of the Quran during this month, he shall have the reward of one who has completed the recitation of the entire Quran during this during other months. So we must we must take notice here that the interrelation with these words, how they are on the same line, and the relationship should be with contemplation. The recitation we should have recitation with contemplation and understanding. So you're sawab for reciting. But if we really want to benefit from Quran, if we really want to, to extract the, 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 the purification from the guidance in the Quran, we should take time and contemplate and ponder on an ayat or many ayats, especially in this holy month. Because if we implement that in this holy month, we will be very successful. The reward of one who ponders on a single verse of the Holy Quran is so great. is so great. And we must internalize the Quran in our inner being and our outer daily and monthly lifestyles. So now, we, we often hear that the the, whole, the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. So there are various opinions about this. Um, what is meant by the revelation of the Quran in the month of Ramadan? The first opinion says that the Quran began to be revealed on Laylatul Qadr in the holy month of Ramadan. The second opinion says that Every, in, that every year during Laylatul Qadr, a portion of the Quran was revealed. And the third opinion is that most of the verses were revealed in the holy month of Ramadan. However, this is disproved by As Asbab al-Nuzul, the occasions of revelation. When we go and look at the occasions of revelation of verses, we see that this is not the case. So all these views have some deficiency in them. These three views that I mentioned have some kind of deficiency in them. As for the first view, we know that the revelation began on the 27th of Rajab, called Batha, when the first verses of Surah Alaq had been revealed. As for the second and third opinion, historical examination shows that, that the occasions of revelation, the Asbab al-Nuzul, um, re seem to disprove these ideas. As we know, there, were, there was a gradual descent a gradual revelation of the ayat over a span of 23 years. Therefore, the, the correct opinion and the fourth opinion is that the message of the Holy Quran, the spiritual form of the Holy Quran, or the curriculum of the Holy Quran, was revealed upon the heart of the Prophet on Laylatul Qadr, in the month of Ramadan. So not the, not the verses word by word, but the message of the Quran, the entire spiritual form of the Quran was revealed upon the Holy Prophet's heart in the month of Ramadan. This is called Inzal. It's an immediate, instant revelation. And then the gradual revelation called Tanzil occurred over a 
period, 23-year period. And this is the most correct view on this issue. So both um, the Quran being revealed in the month of Ramadan and it over a period of 23 years is true. It's just we must understand what is meant by being revealed in the month of Ramadan. In fact, this honor of the Quranic message being revealed in the month of Ramadan is a big honor that we must take notice of. It has a great significance. We should follow this Quran and embed its meanings in our lives. We should embed its guidance in our deeds and actions and sayings. And even within our thoughts. As we should purify our souls and our actions with the Ertamasi Gusul of submission to his exalted being. As a way as the way he has revealed it to us. So we should take we should we should jump in the pond of his revelation of his guidance and wash the filth away and corruption away from our souls in this holy month. The Quran is the guidance revealed for mankind. They need it to actually reach felicity and salvation. Because it is necessary for human perfection to have this guidance. For human progress and development and for reaching true felicity of the of the rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah, that He gives us this guidance. We need to be able to to really reach this rida of Allah. We need to be able to accomplish what He has commanded us to do, and to stay away from what He has prohibited us to do. To stay away from this Quran is the necessary guidance that we need. We need it. It is more important to, than, the, than the water and the food that we're allowed to eat after iftar. If we didn't eat food or drink, we would die. We would not survive this Quran if we don't nourish our souls with it. Our souls will perish. In fact, we can see that Hadith Thakalain, the two weighty things, supports that the Quran and the al Bayt do not separate from each other. So some of us, some of us may think that we stick and cling to the to the, to the teachings of al Bayt, and we don't pay any attention to Quran. No, we are supposed to pay attention to both. Both are together. They are both two weighty things. We, as Shia, we must be implementing those two weighty things in our lives. We must be obeying those two weighty things. They are both very, 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 very important for our salvation. Both of them are an argument against us if we disobey it. It's very important. So... I had read that one sheikh had said that there is a prophetic tradition that states everything has a best season and the best season of the Quran is Ramadan. Everything has a season and the best season the best season for Quran is the month of Ramadan. What does this tell us? This shows us the the, the emphasis and importance on looking at that Quran. Understanding that Quran, reciting that Quran, and, and grasping and understanding aspects of that Quran, studying that Quran, pondering on it. This is the best season for it. It will really enter our hearts if we're sincere. Imam Sadiq Islam said when explaining the words of Allah, those to whom we have given the book, read it as it ought to be read. He says, they recite its verses slowly. And understand it. See, Imam doesn't say that they just recite it. He says they recite its verses slowly and understand it. And act according to its orders. 
Imam says, and they act according to its orders and hope for its promises and are afraid of its threats and take lesson from its stories and obey its commandments and desist from what it prohibits by God it does not mean memorization of the memorizing its verses and studying its letters and reciting its chapters and learning its one tenths and its one fifths. See, in the school of Al Bayt, in Maktabi Al Bayt, we have to implement Quran in our lives. It is not just a, just a recitation without understanding, not just keeping a book on the shelf. No. It is actually following that Quran, obeying the words in that Quran, using the meaning in that Quran. That is the guidance for mankind. So we must emphasize on the fact that implementing what it really means to read the Quran, especially in the holy month, in which it is much easier to make good habits and break bad habits. This month is very easy and it's well known that it's very easy to break bad habits in this month. Just make the effort. It's easier than any other time of the year. Put effort for it. It's so much easier to develop good habits. It's because it's the month of purification, the month of test, and the month of purity, and the month of submission. Just like we were reading from Imam Zain al Abidin's dua. In fact, applying the Quranic teachings and pondering over its verses will provide us the reminder and guidance to excel and achieve higher levels of perfection and spirituality. So it's very important that we take this Quran in this month and use it and implement it and get, take the guidance from it. So in conclusion, my respected brothers and sisters, I find it and emphasize upon it that we recite the Quran and read the Quran and ponder deeply on the Quran in this holy month and that we implement its teachings, its guidance in our lives and prepare ourselves for using that Quran in our lives for the entire year, for an entire lifetime left. That we take the initiative now before it's too late. And we become true moral exemplars. And we become true followers who are infused with the authentic Islamic way of life. So this is my short lecture today, which I hope I didn't um, bore you in the beginning. But wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbi alameen. If there's any questions, you can type in the chat box, inshallah.